The choice of a new White House chief of staff set against the backdrop of escalating legal troubles for President Trump on two fronts, the Russia investigation and those illegal payments made to Stormy Daniels and Karen McDougal during the campaign. A top House Democrat now says those payments may be grounds for impeachment. And our chief congressional correspondent, Mary Bruce, is tracking the story. Good morning, Mary. Good morning, George. Well, the president is putting his own spin on this story. He says he is happy with what he is reading and that he's, quote, totally cleared. But that is not the picture that these documents paint, actually far from it. And now the big question here on the Hill this morning, could these new revelations push House members to impeach? As the fallout grows from those bombshell court filings, President Trump insists he's in the clear. I think it's all turning around very nicely. But the documents tell a very different story, putting the president in growing legal and political jeopardy. And Democrats are sounding the alarm. This investigation is now starting uh, to put the president in serious legal crosshairs, and um, he should be worried, and the whole country should be worried. On one front, Robert Mueller's investigation is revealing new evidence of Russian efforts to build a political alliance, offering the Trump campaign political synergy. And despite the president declaring himself in the clear, even one of his top allies says that's not the case. My view would be that you're not totally cleared, nor is anyone, until Bob Mueller shuts down his office and hands in the keys. But the biggest legal hurdle facing the president may be the contention from federal prosecutors in New York that Trump's fixer Michael Cohen gave illegal hush money to two women during the campaign to remain silent about alleged affairs, and that he acted in coordination with and at the direction of individual one, Donald Trump. That could potentially implicate the president in federal campaign finance felonies. And a top Democrat says it could be grounds for impeachment. Well, they would be impeachable offenses. Uh, whether they are important enough to justify an impeachment is a different question. And even if Congress doesn't act to impeach, the president's legal trouble may be far from over. There's a very real prospect that uh, on the day Donald Trump leaves office, the Justice Department uh, may indict him. Now, on the question of impeachment, Democratic leaders have made clear they want to wait and see what Mueller finds, see his report before they make any moves. But one thing that is definitely clear here, George, when Democrats take control in just a few weeks, they're going to do everything they can to get to the bottom of this. No question about that. Thanks, Mary. Let's bring in our chief legal analyst, Dan Abrams. Let's start out with this uh, campaign finance uh, allegation. The president said this was a simple private transaction. That's his new tweet uh, this morning. But the prosecutors made it pretty clear, even though they're not saying they're indicting the president now, they basically accused accused him of a serious felony. You need to read the sentencing memo because it really makes clear how seriously they treat this crime, first of all. Secondly, they're saying that it was done to subvert the campaign finance laws, it was done to impact the election, and it was done in coordination with and at the direction of Donald Trump. These prosecutors are saying this matters. This is an important crime, and they're essentially saying that Donald Trump was behind it. The question is, can or will they indict? There has been Justice Department guidance against indicting uh, a sitting president. What other options do they have? Well, look, I, I still think that there's a possibility that they, that they could indict. They could certainly, at the very least, make him an unindicted co-conspirator, meaning uh, that they could announce publicly his name in a document which essentially says, he, we believe, is a conspirator in here, but we're not going to indict him. They could also wait if he doesn't rerun for re-election or doesn't win re-election. Election, certainly the statute of limitations would allow them to prosecute after. But this is astonishing. This is not Mueller's team. This is not the 17 angry Democrats uh, that the president's been talking about. Southern District of this New York. This is the Southern District of New York prosecutors who are, this is a separate team who is making this statement. Meantime, Mueller's team has established that the Russians were involved in a conspiracy to interfere in our elections. They've established contacts between the people in Trump's orbit and Russians, that we know that the Trump's team lied about it. What more does Mueller have to do to connect those dots, show a felony there? You have two huge indictments, 12 Russians, 13 Russians for hacking and for taking identities and sowing discord. The question is, can you link the Trump campaign to either of those major indictments? And I think that's the big outstanding question here. But when they say that Michael Cohn is offering information at the core of the Russia investigation, that should make the Trump team nervous. Much more to come. Dan Abrams, thanks very much. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.